and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. Google, Microsoft, Apple. There's no way that you can go a single day without interacting with at least one of those three companies, but they all share something in common. They all want all of your data. They want to scan your photos to sell you advertisements, and then they're going to sell you access to your own stuff for a low monthly fee. Now, hold on a minute. What if we back up here and say, oh, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe that's not in my best interest. See, I'm on a mission to cut out big tech from my computer usage, and that means my cell phone, my laptop, but also the cloud services that I rely on. I'm going to show you how I replaced iCloud, Google Photos, all those necessary services, and how you can do the same. So with all of that being said, let's dig right in. So this video is going to center around a new toy that I got, a core piece of equipment that's going to enable us to actually replace big tech services. In order to do this, the good people at Link Plus sent me a LinkStation N1 to review for you, and in exchange I get to keep it. Now this video is sponsored by them, but they don't get to have a say in what I tell you. Everything that you're going to hear from me is my own original thought, not influenced at all by what the people at Link Plus have told me. So Link Plus, you have been warned. So there are some core cloud services that I'm looking to replace. Specifically photo storage, AI, I want to have large language models that I can access, I want to have an ad blocking VPN, I want to have a video streaming service, and I want to have an offline copy of Wikipedia. Sounds like a pretty tall order, right? Well, here's the thing, it's actually quite simple. So, let me show you what I mean. So, this is Unraid. This is the operating system that uh, comes with the Link Station. It is based on Linux, and it is not free, though. You do have to pay a yearly charge in order to receive updates. The good thing is the Link Station came with a year-long license for it. And so, yeah, we have all the features we might want. So I want to show you what it's like to set something up from scratch. So I'm going to go over here to the Apps tab, and then it's going to pull down a fresh list of all the packages that are available. Now watch this. Let's say I want to install Jellyfin. I, as you can see, there's an official app for it. We just click on it, then we click on Install, and here there's only two things we need to change this right here, and this right here. Then we'll hit apply, and now it's pulling down a copy of Jellyfin from the cloud and spinning it up and setting it up to work on our home server. Notice I didn't have to touch the commands line. I didn't have to create a Docker compose file, and it is using Docker under the hood, so you can do this with any container on Docker Hub that supports x86. Now, speaking of the hardware, this video is not about the hardware of the Link Station, but I do want to point out its specs. So it's got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Uh, it has an Intel N1, N5, N5015 processor. It's a Celeron, and it has four M.2 drive bays and two two and a half inch drive bays. Now what that means is that this is this is a solid state drive NAS. That's its primary function is to be network attached storage and it's all SSD. So this thing is blazing fast. However, I want to point something out. Now the network interface that comes with this thing is a two and a half gigabit port. Now a single NVMe drive can operate faster than 2.5 gigabits over the network. However, because that port is 2.5 gigabits, that's what you're limited to on speed. That's the bottleneck. Now, do I think this is a deal breaker? No, absolutely not. Because you see, most home networks are using gigabit networking. It's rare to find a home with 10 or 5 gigabit networking in it. Uh, so this 2.5 gigabit network interface is not a deal breaker, but that's really the only downside I can think of. Now, it is running a pretty weak processor. It's an N5015, 
Uh, it's about equivalent to a 7th Gen i5, roughly speaking, so good enough to run a few lightweight Linux virtual machines. Speaking of which, let me show you some of that. So it's very easy to set up virtual machines in Unraid. Uh, you can see I have a few spun up here. I have one for Docker containers. The reason I have a separate virtual machine for Docker containers is pretty simple. You know, Unraid, although it is very flexible, it's not going to work with every single container on Docker Hub. Uh, some of those require a bit of an esoteric setup process. For those that don't work natively with Unraid, I just put them in that virtual machine and they work fine. For example, I've got my Pi hole running in there. And this is where it gets interesting, because when you start putting these pieces together, you can kind of, you can kind of start to get a complete picture of what I'm getting at. But setting up virtual machines on Unraid is particularly easy. You simply upload the ISO, boot from the ISO, install. It's QEMU, it's KVM, it's all the Linux staples you've come to expect. So here on Unraid, you'll see I have a few Docker containers and a few virtual machines set up. Uh, you can see first, in the Docker container section, I have Home Assistant. Now, Home Assistant is super cool, but it's not the point of this video. Just know it's a way for you to automate your smart home without relying on cloud services. So if you want to have a smart house, Home Assistant is a great option. We also have Jellyfin, which you just saw me install. That's for streaming videos. Uh, then I have Open Web UI. So this Open Web UI is a bit of an interesting one. Open Web UI is a program that allows you to interact with large language models that you run yourself. Uh, that's really cool, but the problem here is that the Link Station does not have enough horsepower to actually run a large language model, but it can run the interface. So what I've done is I've put the interface here in Unraid, in a Docker container, and I connected that interface back to my Mac Mini, which does have enough horsepower to run some large language models. So what you see here is kind of a hybrid setup. It is, in fact, creating the interface you see on the Unraid server, but the actual large language model is happening back on the Mac. And another one that I have here is Photo Prism. So I'm not going to go in there and show you all my photos. I don't know you like that. However, just know it's, an, it's a replacement for iCloud Photos. It's a replacement for Google Photos. Basically, you take a picture on your phone, it syncs in the app, and it's backed up on the server. Now, speaking of backups, I want to point out something that you don't see here. You don't see backups. There's a good reason for that. You don't want to have your backups running on the same machine as your production workload. You want to have a separate machine for backups. That way, when the important one dies, you can still get to your backups. So I have that hosted on a different machine. So if you want to follow in my footsteps and cut big tech out of your life, this is a great way to get started with it. The Link Station N1 starts at $399, that's with 16 gigs of RAM, 4 M.2 drive bays, and two 2.5 inch drive bays. I've got mine kitted out with 2 terabytes of storage, which I know isn't a lot, but storage prices are high these days. But if you want to do the same thing, then pick up a Link Station N1 and uh, just go to town on it, set up all the services you might want, you will be shocked at how easy it is. And that's really what's made Unraid my favorite self-hosting operating system, because it makes setting up applications and services so, so easy. It is a walk in the park, and if I were to start over again from scratch, I would start with Unraid. Now, Unraid is not an enterprise solution. I would not run Unraid in a business, but for a home server, a home use case application, I think it's perfectly usable. So should you pick up the Link Station N1? I'm going to say yes, especially if you can find it on sale. You see, all of these services that I'm replacing with it, my video streaming, my music streaming, my uh, AI usage, that's 20 bucks a month right there. I did the math and I'm saving about $60 a month by having all of this hosted on my own.
And so the thing is going to pay for itself in less than half a year. That's really not such a bad deal. So again, thank you to Link Plus for sending me the Link Station N1. I've had a very good experience with it. And I just want to point out the people at Link Plus are so kind. I had some pretty silly paranoia about accepting this sponsorship and they were completely understanding and completely willing to work with me despite the fact that I asked for a, a little bit more security questions than what most people do. So yeah, if their customer service is anything like that, then you're in good hands. I really can't say enough how impressed I am with this piece of hardware. It looks good in my server rack, and it's looking good on my bills. So anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.